Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Today, inshallah, we're going to solve Cambridge exam, October, November 2023, paper 61. Let's get started. A student uses chromatography to analyze samples of three different dyes. A spot of each dye is placed on the paper and some ethanol is poured into the beaker. You should draw three spots to show where the three dyes are placed on the paper at the start of the experiment. Of course, the three dyes will be placed on the baseline at the start. So here we have the baseline and the three spots to represent the three different dyes. Draw a line to show the level of ethanol in the beaker at the start. Here ethanol is the solvent. So of course, the level of the solvent will be below the baseline. We will draw a line here for ethanol. Of course, it will be above the lower part of the paper, but below the baseline. During experiment, the ethanol moves up the paper. State when the student should remove the chromatography paper from ethanol in the beaker. We should remove the paper when the ethanol reaches near the top of the paper. Here, figure 1.2 shows the result of the chromatography experiment. State what conclusions can be made from these results. Here we have the spots for the three different dyes. Dye 1 has only one spot, so dye 1 is pure. Dye 3 also has one spot, so we can say that dye 1 and dye 3 are both pure substances. Dye 2 has two spots. The first spot has the same distance like dye 1, and the second has the same distance as dye 3. So both dye 1 and dye 3 are present in dye 2. And as we can see, all the three dyes are soluble in the solvent. Question 2. Copper 2 carbonate reacts with dilute acid to make carbon dioxide. Malachite is a mineral that contains copper 2 carbonate. A student investigates the rate of reaction between the powdered malachite and dilute ethanoic acid at different temperature the student does six experiments so we have six experiments at six different temperatures to study the effect of increasing temperature on the rate of reaction between the malachite which contain copper carbonate and ethanoic acid the first experiment using measuring cylinder we measure 40 centimeter cube of ethanoic acid put it in a conical flask and warm it about five degrees measure the temperature of the acid and set the apparatus as shown. Here, the carbon dioxide gas will be collected here in this inverted measuring cylinder. We will remove the bung from the conical flask and add one gram of the powdered malachite. Quickly replace the bung and stop, start the stop clock. Record the time taken to collect 100 centimeter cube of the gas in the inverted measuring cylinder. And then we will make uh, another experiment remove uh, clean the flask and rinse it with distilled water uh, the experiment two will be done at about 10 degrees we will heat the acid for 10 degrees experiment 3 15 then 25 35 and finally in experiment 6 we will heat it about 40 degrees here we have the table to show the result the thermometer diagram and the stop clock diagram and we should complete the table the first thermometer diagram here we have the reading between 26 and 27 so it will be 26.5 then 31 36 42 53 and 59.5 all the readings should be for one decimal place then the stop clock diagram here the time to measure the time time only measured in seconds so the first diagram we have one two three four minutes and 42 seconds four minutes will be 240 seconds plus 42 so we have a total of 282 seconds in the second diagram we have three minutes and 15 seconds three minutes will be 180 plus 15 the total will be 195 seconds and so so on we will calculate the uh the time needed for all the six experiment the third one 148 seconds then 110 seconds 65 and finally 44 seconds complete a suitable scale on the y-axis and plot the result for the experiment from one to six draw a line of best fit through your points here on the y-axis we have the time taken to collect the hundred centimeter cube of the gas 
the time uh, from 44 to 228. So I, um, I made a scale starting from 0, 50, 100, 150, 200, and it ends at 300. And I plot the results, the points, drawing a best fat curve to show the results. The question here, the average rate of reaction in the experiment can be calculated using the equation as shown. The average, average rate of the reaction, the volume of the gas collected, and the time need, divided by the time needed to collect the gas. Use this equation to calculate the average rate of reaction in experiment 6. Give, your units, give the units for the rate you have calculated. Of course, the volume of the gas collected is 100 cm cube because this is the volume will be collected in the six experiments and the time needed in experiment six will be 44 seconds. This is the result from the table. So the rate will be 100 divide 44. It will be 2.27 centimeter cube per second. This is the rate of experiment six. Did you see in which experiment? From 1 to 6, the rate of reaction is the greatest. Of course, it will be for experiment 6. It is the highest rate because it takes the shortest time, only 44 seconds. So experiment 6 is the highest rate. Extend the line on your graph to deduce the time taken to collect 100 cm of the gas when temperature of the isanoic acid is 65. So here we, we will extend the graph to reach 65, then record the time taken to collect 100 centimeter of the gas from the y-axis it will be 30 seconds so the answer here will be 30 seconds the 40 centimeter cube of isanoic acid in each experiment is measured using measuring cylinder measuring cylinders are available in the following sizes 10 25 50 100 and 500 centimeter cube Draw a circle around the size of the measuring cylinder, which would be most suitable to measure the 40 cm cube of ethanoic acid. Of course, the most suitable size is 50 cm because we will only use 40 cm cube. So we will draw a circle around 50 cm cube. Most of the gas collected in the measuring cylinder is air rather than carbon dioxide. Explain why air is collected in the measuring cylinder. At the start of the experiment, we have air in the conical flask and air in the delivery tube so when carbon dioxide gas form it it pushed the air from the conical flask and the delivery tube to the measuring cylinder that's why air is collected in the measuring cylinder so the reason for the collection of the air because air is pushed out from the conical flask by the formation of carbon dioxide Explain why this will not affect the accuracy of the result. Of course, it will not affect the accuracy of the result because the volume of the, the air formed in the uh, measuring cylinder is exactly equal to the volume of carbon dioxide gas produced because air will be displaced by the same volume of the carbon dioxide gas formed. So the volume of air displaced from the conical flask is equal to the volume of carbon dioxide gas Format, so you will have the same vi final volume and this will not affect the results. During experiment, the temperature of the acid decreases slowly. Give a reason why the temperature of the acid decreases and suggest a change to the apparatus that would minimize the decrease in temperature. Of course, during the experiment, there is a heat loss to the surrounding and this will decrease the temperature of the acid. So the reason is the heat loss to the surroundings and we can Make a change to decrease this heat loss by using insulator. Insulate the flask and this will minimize the heat loss and can maintain uh, the temperature of the acid for longer time. Question 3. A student test two substances, M and N. Solid M is hydrated chromium nitrate. So the cation is chromium and the anion is nitrate ions. Com complete the expected observation. A student place half of solid M in a boiling tube and heat it strongly. The student hold a piece of anhydrous cobalt chloride paper at the mouth of the boiling tube. Of course, because the solid chromium nitrate is hydrated, so it contains water. When heated strongly, steam will produce and 
when we hold a piece of the anhydrous cobalt chloride paper, we can use a test for the presence of water. So the observation will be the color change from blue to pink indicate the presence of water. The student insert a glowing splint into the mouth of the boiling tube and the splint burst into flames. Identify the gas given off by heating the solid M, which causes this result. The gas, of course, oxygen, which relight the glowing splint. The student dissolve the remaining solid M in water to form solution M. The student add aqueous sodium hydroxide dropwise and then an excess to the solid M. We have chromium ion, so by adding uh, sodium hydroxide, the observation will be a green precipitate and because chromium is amphoteric, so the chromium hydroxide form it is amphoteric, so the observation will be the precipitate will dissolve in excess. A student add a piece of aluminium file to the product from here, BI, and the mixture is then warm. The student test for any gas produced. Here is the test for nitrate ion, ammonia gas produced, so the observation will be the gas produced will change the color of the damp red litmus paper to blue. This is the test for ammonia gas. Test on solid N. Here we have a table to show the observation for solid N. Number one, a flame test on solid N. We have light green flame, and this is the flame color for barium ions. Then dissolve uh, remaining of solid N in water and divide it into four portions. So we will make four tests. The first portion, we will add a dilute sulfuric acid. Having white precipitate with sulfuric acid indicates, of course, formation of barium sulfate. So again, we have barium ions. Test three. To the second portion, we add nitric acid followed by drops of silver nitrate. A bale yellow precipitate. Silver nitrate is the reagent used to test for halide ions. The formation of a bale yellow precipitate indicates the formation of silver iodide because it is yellow. So this is uh, this result can show that we have iodide ions. Test four to the third portion we will add nitric acid followed by a few drops of barium nitrate. No visible change because of course barium nitrate will not react with any of the ions present in solid N. The fourth portion of solution N, we don't have sulfate here, so no visible change. Uh, test 5, uh, solution N add about 1 cm aqueous chlorine, a brown solution will be formed. By adding chlorine, chlorine is more uh, reactive than iodine, so chlorine will displace iodine from barium iodide forming iodine and the solution of iodine is brown. That's why we have a brown solution here. Describe how to carry out the flame test. To carry the flame test, you will use a platinum wire, clean platinum wire. We will put it in the sample, solid N, and then put it in a hot blue flame. Identify the uh, ions present in solid N or identify solid N. As we said here, solid N is barium iodide so here is the name of solid n barium iodide and the ions present in solid n experiment four here we have graze your way and kitchen clean are two solutions used as household cleaners that contain aqueous ammonia so the two cleaners contain ammonia plan an investigation to find which of the two household cleaners contain aqueous ammonia with the highest concentration Assume that aqueous ammonia is the only alkali in the cleaners. Include in your plan the method that you will use to see which cleaner contains the highest concentration. How will, result, how will your results will show uh, that the household cleaner contain aqueous ammonia will have the highest concentration. So we will make an experiment to measure the concentration which of the two cleaners have the highest concentration. We can compare the concentration of two alkalis, of course, using titration. So we will measure a known volume of the first cleaner using measuring cylinder and put it in a conical flask. Add few drops of methyl orange indicator. Of course, here we have ammonia, so the color of the indicator will be yellow. 
uh, fill the purette with hydrochloric acid and start adding acid from the purette until the color of the indicator change from yellow to orange so we reach neutral solution now we can record the volume of the hydrochloric acid used on the burette scale repeat the experiment for the second cleaner using the same volume or the second cleaner and again record the volume of hydrochloric acid used when the color change from yellow to orange the cleaner that will use the biggest volume of the acid of course is the cleaner with the highest concentration here we come to the end of our exam like the video and subscribe to the channel to receive all the updates comment down below if you have any question thank you for watching wish you all best of luck